So you continue to move with your ear and hear what thus saith the Lord as we welcome Pastor Jason Lizarraga to the pulpit and to our to preach the word of life. My, 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 let's lift up the name of Jesus. My, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift him up. Hallelujah. My, my. My purpose is to worship him. My passion is to praise him. My calling is to preach him. My job is to serve him. My heart is to love him. My desire is to see him. My hope is to live with him. My, my, my. Jesus is my everything. Can somebody say my, my, my. Jesus is my everything. The song says, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the name. I don't know about you over here or you over here, but I've got a reason. As I'm standing, I've got a reason to lift up the name of Jesus. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my helper. He's my lover. He's my protector. My God is my everything. If you agree, lift up your hands and magnify him. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, I feel him in this place. I'm so glad you came to worship him. I'm so glad you came. This ain't no dead church. We don't have to pump and prime you. But you're, you came loaded. You came ready. Hallelujah. My God. Woo. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God. I want to give double honor to Bishop. And we thank God for Bishop to honor First Lady and Lady Anna. Thank God for awesome leadership. And I especially want to thank God for all the visitors we have today. My God. Y'all are taking over. And that's all right. We welcome you. And I personally want... I haven't been able to get out of uh, the pulpit up here and walk around as I'm nursing and rehabbing a, a little injury. But I greet you from the pulpit. And it's so good to have everybody here and the saints of God. Why don't we thank God for everybody who's made it out? We love and welcome you. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would get your Bibles because I know you brought your sword today. I'm excited for the word that the Lord has given us on this afternoon. You would turn to Exodus 2 and 10, singular passage, Exodus 2 and 10. And when you have found your place, could you please say amen? Why don't we thank God for awesome praise and worship and leading the singing, musicianship. Whew. I think we're a little spoiled here sometimes, but that's how good God is. Amen. The scripture reads, and the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son and she called his name Moses. 
And she said, because I drew him out of the water. She called him Moses because I drew him out of the water. If you would bow your head and close your eyes, let us pray. Father, we come before you thanking you in advance that you will speak to us a word of encouragement, empower us through the Holy Ghost. We are asking for a demonstration of power that is sorely needed in these last and perilous days. Touch young and old, reach the visitor as well as the mature saint. Bless this word for your honor and glory. In the precious name of Jesus, everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. The title that the Lord has given me on this afternoon is Drawn Out to Drag Others Through. Drawn Out to Drag Others Through. The Holy Ghost wants you to recognize your miraculous beginning for the conclusion of your phenomenal destiny. Now read that again. The Holy Ghost wants you to recognize your miraculous beginning where you started for the conclusion of your phenomenal destiny in Christ. In Exodus 2 and 2, this is dealing with Moses and his call, his beginning. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Moses' mother saw a good thing out of a bad situation. She saw a good thing out of a bad situation. Amidst the death sentence of the cowardly Egyptians, she made a move and she hid her son. She saw favor and she acted by faith. When faced with the fear tactics of the enemy, we must operate as this wise mother. The Bible tells us that she hid him. She protected him. And I can even tell you that she did that until the Lord prompted a plan of purpose. When the enemy has come against you and you don't know exactly what to do and there's fear all around you, negative doctor reports and all kinds of stuff that the devil throws your way, if you don't have a plan, what you can do is what Moses' mother did, the Bible says she saw him and she realized that there was going to be something different about this child. and She wasn't going to allow this death decree to affect her children, especially her son. So while she waited on God to give her a plan and for God to give her a word, the Bible says that she hid him for a couple of months. <laughs> when you don't know exactly what you do, when you don't know exactly what's going on in your life, uh, go ahead and hide the favor and promise of God in your life and let God speak a word into your life uh, in the process uh, go ahead and worship him uh, in the process wait to uh, act on faith and let God breathe a rhema word into your spirit uh, but just don't give in to the devil don't give in to the enemy because he does not know what he's talking about uh, there's purpose all around your life uh, you've been raised up 
up you've been delivered and set free for a purpose and just because death has been breathed upon your life if you've got to wait a little bit go ahead and hide your promise go ahead and hide your Moses for a little while until God begins to reveal the full plan for your life I believe we have some mothers that have acted like this you know when your children are struggling you went ahead and hid them in prayer you went ahead and hid them with scripture put the prayed the blood of Jesus upon their life uh, until you get it son until you get it daughter I'm gonna hide you a little bit uh, I'm gonna anoint your room uh, I'm gonna pray in this house uh, when you go to school I'm gonna lift up your name in prayer why because there's favor there's purpose and destiny upon your life and the devil ain't gonna get our babies the devil ain't gonna have our children they're the heritage of the Lord we have raised them in the fear and admonition of God and we're gonna fight for them we're gonna pray over them and we're gonna hide them for a little while if we need to we're talking about the next generation of warriors we're talking about a generation that's gonna do something in Christ but as a mama and as a daddy you're gonna have to do your job you're going to have to seek the Lord and say, Lord, what would you have me do? They're saying that I'm supposed to throw my child into the river. They're, they're, they're afraid of us. They know that we're more and mightier. They're afflicting us, Lord. That's why we come against the spirit of abortion in the name of Jesus. I don't care what's happening on the political front. We operate in the spiritual realm. We know that there is purpose. God can raise up a preacher out of a mama that's strung out on crack or heroin. It don't matter when there's life entering into this world. There's purpose. There's potential. There's an opportunity for a Moses or a deliverer to rise up. Some of you got a story and some of you know what I'm talking about. Had it not been for a praying grandma, a praying nana, a praying mom over your life, you might have not been here. There was purpose in his life. In Exodus 2 and 10, the scripture tells us that his mother called him Moses because I drew him out of the water. Moses was spared for the spectacular. There was something special about his life. He was gonna do something amazing. Not just one or two things, but this was a prophet like no other. He was on the verge of being destroyed by the taskmasters and the pharaohs of the day. But we're so thankful for a praying mom. Can somebody say amen? amen. Although it may have been Egyptian hands that drew him and named him from the water. Everybody say from the water. It was the Lord who was orchestrating and aligning this mighty life of destiny. She said, I'm going to call his name Moses because I'm going to draw him because I drew him out of the water. Moses grew up knowing that his life was spared, as I said previously, for something spectacular. You're here by divine ordination if you look over your life you can see that the enemy tried to destroy you tried to destroy your family tried to take your mind try to take your body but there was a greater force, 
that was working against that drug addiction. There was a greater force that was working against death that was knocking on your door even though you may have been partying and you may have been doing drugs and you may have been living a crazy life uh, thank god that the lord sent his angel a minister of flame of fire and saying listen death you could go this far but no further because this one is gonna find himself this one's gonna find herself in the house of god i'm gonna clean her up i'm gonna sober her up I'm going to remove the drug addiction. I'm going to take the spirit of suicide away. Why? Because I'm sparing her for something spectacular. I know her mama didn't want her. Her daddy didn't want her. Nobody wanted her. But my God, Jesus wanted her. Wanted her life for something amazing. You've been spared for something wonderful in your life. There's a reason why you're here in your right mind sober. I said there's a greater reason than you could ever imagine if you could only see through eyes of faith and, and say thank you Jesus because that overdose didn't take me. Thank you Jesus because those pills couldn't take me under. Thank you Jesus because my neighborhood couldn't suck me in. Thank you Jesus because you kept me. Thank you Jesus you gave me some beautiful children. Thank you Jesus you brought me to a wonderful house. Thank you Jesus you allowed me to read and understand your word. Thank Thank you, Jesus. You've given me gifts and, and you've given me abilities and talents. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When the other Israelites, when other Israelite sons were being thrown in the water and drowned, Moses was delivered out of the river's destructive force. He was miraculously saved for a specific purpose. Again, his name means delivered out of the water. Everybody say out of the water again. You see, water is a destructive force that we see in nature that washes away contaminants. It can carve pathways out of rock, making beautiful canyons. It purifies and cleanses water. Death by water was the child's sentence. The problem was, and I want you to hear me, the problem was the Egyptians didn't know much about the Lord's dealing with the water. They didn't know much of how God worked with the water. Am I in an apostolic house? Can I tell somebody that there is too much direct evidence surrounding the water to chalk it up as coincidence? I have to say that again. <laughs> There is too much direct evidence surrounding the water to chalk it up as coincidence. Noah and his family was saved by water as it destroyed all the godlessness all around them. Joshua crossed the Jordan as it made way for safe passage into the promised land at the water. Jonah was thrown into it. The Bible says that he was thrown into it and saved by it as a great fish kept and delivered him spitting them out on dry land by the water john the baptist baptized people for the remission's sake at the jordan the water jesus turned the water into wine he was baptized for example's sake jesus met a woman at the old waters well the church in the book of acts went through the same waters being baptized in jesus name I said there's too much direct evidence happening at the water. So when they threw Moses in the water, you're throwing him into a miraculous arena. I wish somebody could feel what I'm feeling right now. 
don't mess with the water in Jesus because you might get a miracle on your hand. You might be trying to kill me by the water, but God is going to do something else. God is going to do something greater. First John 5 and 8 tells us there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Can I tell somebody the water makes way for the wonderful? I said the water makes way for the wonderful. I think some of you have forgotten where you have come from. Some of you have forgotten where God has delivered you. And he wants to remind somebody this afternoon that you've got a miracle on your hands <laughs> I said you've got a reference point Woo. there is a place <laughs> that the enemy tried to destroy you but God said no I'm gonna raise them up instead I said it's at the water <laughs> Moses's name and his early miracle at the water was a light indicator of how he would be heavily used in the future. My God, I have to keep reminding myself because that's just too good. Moses' name and his miracle at the water was a light indicator of how he would be heavily used in the future. The Bible says that he was drawn out of the water. He was drawn out of, he was saved out of the water. But if you go to Exodus 14 and 21, 40 some years later, the Bible tells us that Moses stretched out his hand over the water or he stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made this dry, the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right and on their left and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen and it, Exodus 14 and 24 continues and it came to pass that in the morning to watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters somebody say waters may come again unto the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared that'll preach too and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea This is exciting to me. Here we see the Lord uses Moses' name and testimony to defeat the enemy. He uses his name, Moses drawn out of the water, and his testimony to defeat the enemy. My God. You see, at one point he had to be drawn out. But he was drawn out only so that he could drag others through. Woo! You were drawn out. You were water baptized in Jesus' name. Drawn out of all of your mess. Your sins were remitted. Your sins were washed away only so that you can drag somebody else through like Moses. There's a reason that God saved you. There's a reason he spared your life. There's a reason you were drawn out of the water. It's not just for you. I said, it's not just for you, but so that you can drag your family, you can drag your neighborhood, you can drag your community and say, hey, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is safety. It is a house of refuge. You can lose your addictions. You can lose all your sins in the name of Jesus. 
We've got elders to pray for you. We've got water to baptize you into. God's spirit is there to revive you and to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, the devil can't stand you. He's been trying to kill you for a long time. He's been trying to stop and thwart your purpose. Mm, but you were drawn out of the water for a greater purpose than yourself. Oh my God, I'm so thankful for my testimony. I'm so thankful for what God's done in my life. I could have been dead. I could have been six feet under. But I believe that there has been a purpose over my life. It's to preach and to teach, to testify, to praise, to worship the God who has delivered and saved me out of all my sins. But I believe I've been drawn out to help somebody else out. It's not just about me. There's times when I've been discouraged in my life that I made it about me. But then I was reminded, you've had a miracle in your life. There was a miracle at the water. Some of you are struggling today. Some of you are just in a dark place in your life. But if you've been baptized, if you've gone through the water, you've got to go back to that reference point and tell the devil, listen, devil, I may have failed. I may have messed up. I may have not had the best attitude all the time. But if there's one thing that I can say over my life is, is there's a witness. The water, the blood, the spirit in this earth agrees in one. They testify that one time a name was pronounced over me. At one time I was washed. At one time I was spirit filled. The blood was applied to my life. And if there's nothing else going on in your life right now, thank him for the water. Thank him for the blood. Thank him for the spirit. What I love about this message is not everybody can preach this message. You're not going to hear this on TBN. You're not going to hear it on Christian television. But it's those old rickety apostolic Pentecostal houses of worship that still want to talk about baptism, that still want to preach about holiness, that still tell you that you've got gifts and you should have fruit of the Spirit. We're expecting miracles to fall out in this place. We're expecting people to be healed, people to be delivered, lives to be transformed transformed why because this is where God dwells the waters here and God dwells upon the face of the waters God wants to bless and strengthen somebody in the name of Jesus we get excited and we dance about the name of Jesus oh my god that's why we get so so loud in this place and so uh, jubilant why because God did something in our life we can get all theological but the bottom line is you go down in the waters in Jesus name and when you come out there's going to be something different about your life that I can promise you we've got some ex-heroin addicts we've got some ex-prostitutes uh, we've got some ex-gangbangers uh, we've got some ex-good people We've got some ex whatever, but what we have in this house are saints of God that have gone through the Jordan, that have gone through the Red Sea, and have found themselves walking on dry land. My God, there's something different about somebody who's been through a miracle. There's something different about somebody who's been through the water. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. You need to go speak to the water and say, stand up on end, because I've got to get through. The enemy's on my back, and I've got a promised land to get to. We've been drawn out to drag others through. Just for reference sake, let me give you a couple of epistles as I close this. Galatians 3 and 27 tells us, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Romans 6 and 4 through 6 tells us, 
Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 1 Peter 3 and 21 tells us the like figure whereunto, even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the field of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you've had a miraculous deliverance, it creates miraculous appreciation. To our visiting friends, if you don't understand why, it is so crazy in here. It's because we've all experienced miracles. Beginning with our salvation. And we understand that our bodies are not our own. And we give them back to the service of the Lord in praise, worship, and appreciation. And I don't think we could be dramatic enough. I don't believe we could be passionate and excited enough. Because one day he's going to call us home. And he's going to see those who have the name of Jesus upon their life. Those who braved hell to get to the house of God. Those who have testified of the goodness of Jesus. Those who have held to the apostles' doctrine and said, Lord, I've done all that I have could to walk in faith. Because I'm thankful for your grace and your favor that has been upon my life. One reason churches today don't have miraculous power is because they oppose and deny the miraculous at the water. For a death sentence, Moses received not only life, but miraculous life. If you read about Moses' life, he is one of the most powerful prophets outside of Jesus. He spoke to God face to face. He was given the word. He saw so many miracles. And another thing that I think is really beautiful is I thought somehow that Moses was the only one that was saved in that family as far as from the river. But Moses had a brother. His name was Aaron. We don't read much about his beginning or what mama did to save him, but we know that he was delivered as well. And we're thankful for the family of God and we're thankful for the miracles of God. If you've been baptized, if you've operated in faith, then the Lord wants to remind you there's a purpose greater than you could ever imagine in your life. If you've not been baptized, if you've not been forgiven of your sins, there's an altar not a priest but there's an altar that you can talk directly to God all of your darkest deepest secrets and sins and give them to God God will forgive you be baptized the waters ready in the beautiful name of Jesus God's spirit is here to fill you to live a holy resurrected life this is the mandate, this is the gospel of the church. As we believe in God, we believe what his son did as he came to this earth, as he died, arose, and gave us such a blessed hope. Amen. I'm asked that you would stand. Baptism, it is a place of identification that hides us in Christ by drowning our destructive carnal nature so that we can breathe as a new creature in the Lord. Amen. There's a purpose in your life, a great purpose, but only you can grab a hold of it by faith. And all of hell's forces have come against you to stop it, to hinder it, to get in the way of it. 
But I believe that the Lord is going to have his way in you and in your family. And he is going to give you a strength to overcome anything. He'll give you dominion over sin if you just let him. We're going to invite you to come to this altar. Come and pray and talk to Jesus.